Good morning, everybody. A hearty welcome to you all this morning, um, both those of us who are present here in person and those of us who are here online. Uh, this is St. John Lutheran Church in Louisville, Kentucky. We are a grace-based, Christ-centered community seeking to share the good news and what we do and what we say. And this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, also known as Christmas Eve morning. So I am going to, uh, uh, a Merry Christmas, everybody. There we are. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, today we're going to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, but we're going to sneak a few Christmas carols in as well. So if you can find the red hymnal in the pew rack in front of you, there should be at least a couple in each pew. If you can't, we have several up here. Um, and we can uh, and we can pass those out if you need them. So raise your hand if you can't find a red hymnal. All right. We're going to sing a couple of verses of of a few Christmas carols. Uh, but um, before we begin, I just want to make sure you have that available. Before we begin, I got a few announcements for you. Um, uh, if you uh, do in the internet, please follow us on YouTube and Instagram uh, and share what's going on for you and for this congregation with your friends so that folks can know what God is doing uh, here. Uh, please uh, fill out a visitor sheet. They should be in the pews uh, next to you and, and uh, pass those down if you can. Um, uh, when you get a chance, if you wish, please uh, fill those out so we can pray for you. Uh, in the coming days. Okay, we set a goal of 150 uh, invitations or stories about what God is doing at St. John uh, by Christmas, and we have uh, smashed that goal. We are now at 160, so thanks be to God. Thank you, everybody. We will continue this uh, in January. I'll tell you what our new goal is going to be for 2024. We uh, sold for families in the developing world, three nests of chickens, six goats, four piglets, 18 honeybee hives, two shares of a cow, a share of a fish farm, and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, and a water filter. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks be to God for uh, those ways that we have of being a part of God's providence for folks. I'll be on vacation after Christmas, as of tomorrow, for about a week, and Scott Meyer will be preaching and presiding on the 31st of December. And of course, uh, if you feel like coming back tonight, uh, four o'clock uh, Christmas Eve service and 7.30, uh, we'll have uh, the Holy Communion and candle lighting and all that. But for right now, um, I invite everyone to stand. Uh, well, Deneen, just a minute, if Deneen could play us a brief prelude to get us out of our announcements, and into the mind of worship, uh, then, then we'll stand and begin. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who opens the heavens and draws us near with salvation. Amen. God is patient and merciful. 
desiring all to come to repentance, trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression, complicit in systems of exploitation, careless with creation's bounty, and negligent in living honorable lives. Look upon us with mercy, turn our hearts again to you, that we might walk in your ways, for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For our opening hymn, instead of creator of the stars of night, we will be singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. And that is hymn number 283 in your red hymnal. Hymn number 283. We will sing verses one and four. One and four. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Light dawns on a weary world when I begin to see all people's dignity. Light dawns on a weary world, the promised day of justice comes. The trees shall clap their hands, the dry lands gush with springs, the hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. As all the world in wonder echoes shalom. 
Love grows in a weary world When hungry hearts find bread And children's dreams are fed Love grows in a weary world The promised feast of plenty comes The kill shall clap their hands The dry lands gush with springs the hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace as all the world in wonder echoes shalom. Hope blooms in a weary world when creatures once forlorn find wilderness reborn. Hope blooms in a weary world, the promised green of Eden comes. The trees will clap their hands, the violence will springs. The hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. As all the world in wonder echoes shalom. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy. That willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. It is time for the children's moment. Lily's the only one here. That's all right. Oh, we need more. Well, we don't have any blueberries, though, today. So why bother if you don't have blueberries? Oh, you're, you're going to go back because there's no blueberries? There's no blueberries, so she's going to go back. Tonight, there will be brownies. You won't be? Okay, well, well, we're doing All right, so today, so the children's sermon for today then, since you're not going to be here to, today, um, hmm, wait a minute, where's Patty? Patty, can you go into my office and get a piece of a brownie? Yeah. Oh, now, now Trey's coming up. Now Trey's coming. So what we're going to do, two pieces of brownie, two pieces of brownie, and a candle. No, don't worry about the candle. The candle's too much. Go get the, yes. You'll, you'll, need a, you'll need a knife. Okay, so we're going to, while we're doing this, we're going to light the advent candles, okay? Because we've got to do that during children's moment. All right. It's getting old. So here we go. Y'all want to help? All right. Now remember, this is kind of like a calendar, right? The Advent wreath is. You have different kinds of candle litters. Here, you wanna you wanna light it? There? So last week, here we go. That's right. So before we lit this candle, the first week of Advent. And the week after that, we lit this candle and that candle, both. See? The week after that, we lit this candle. We lit all three candles last week, didn't we? All right. And now, oops, you can light again. We're like this candle. All right. And tonight, the Christmas Eve, we'll light this candle. But not yet, because it's still Advent. Still Advent. Now, oh, wow. You, you, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so what's going to happen now is we have a couple of candles thank you this is the uh to be too complicated all right 
We've got to light the candles, right? So we're going to light the candles. Here we go. You see, because what is Christmas? You know what Christmas is? They know. Just a minute. This is Jesus' birthday. Oh, no. All right, so we have birthday, we have birthday cake for Jesus. There's Jesus, two candles for 2,000 years. All right, we're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. Ready? All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. All right, on the count of three, we're going to blow out the candles. One, two. <gasps> Good. All right, you get one. You get one. I get a little crumb. All right. Oh, we got to pray. Okay. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you for coming to us as a baby in a manger and as a savior on a cross. And we ask you to bless everyone's Christmas this day in the world and uh, help us to show your love um, each day. In Jesus' name, amen. And may, the, the, may these brownies nourish our bodies and not make us too frenetic during the church service. Okay. How about we sing... Um, Mark the Herald Angels Sing, number 290, 270, uh, verses 1 and 3, hymnal number 270, and then we'll go on with our uh, readings. The herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise each child of earth, born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And now it is time for our Bible passages for the day. The first reading is from Second Samuel, starting... Chapter 7, starting at verse 1. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, 
why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly the psalm of the day. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in, my, in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor upon your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done greatness, great things for me, the, and the holy is in is your name you have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation you have shown you have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in your conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly you have filled the hunger with good things, and you sent the rich away empty. You have, you have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from Romans 16, beginning with verse 25. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, 
favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. Come, O King of death, he come, your own from Satan's tyranny. Men depths your help, your people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm going to try to talk really fast for the sermon today so we have enough time for another uh, Christmas carol. Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom we hear about in the gospel lesson for today, was a remarkable woman. She has captured the imagination of literally hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of millions of people over many centuries. In, uh, I think it was 1164 in Paris, France, they started to build a giant cathedral with, uh, with stone arches that seemed to go up forever and ever and with stained glass windows that shone in the sun with the colors of heaven. And it took them almost 100 years, almost a century. What would be, it be like if somebody tried to build a building nowadays and it took a whole hundred years? Yeah. And it was for her, for her, for Mary. And not only in Western Europe, in Paris, in France, but also all the way across the continent in what is now Turkey, in the city uh, which then was called Constantinople, was a vast city and it held out for 900 years. 900 years, nobody took it over, nobody got into the city who they didn't want to get into the city. It was attacked many, many times and it defended itself successfully for 900 years. The United States is 250 years old, just about here, and that was 900 years. So we got some time, you know, we still got some time to go. Uh, and Count Constantinople had these beautiful, huge walls made out of stone, double walls all the way around and along the uh, seashore. It had little tunnels in the wall about that big around and they'd pour, pour what was called Greek fire through the tunnels and the, tun tun and the Greek fire would go through the tunnels and spew out the walls onto anybody that was attacking. But they did not give credit to the walls. They did not credit the defense of the city to the walls, nor to the Greek fire, which was kind of like napalm is now, you know. They didn't credit the Greek fire either. They said it was Mary 
who protected their city. And they put pictures of Mary up on the walls when barbarians came to take over and they fended them off. And they called her the Theotokos. That's our 50 cent word for the day, Theotokos, the mother of God. People speculated about why Mary would be so important. And people thought to themselves, well, Mary will be nice. Mary will be nurturing. And Mary will be kind and not quite so austere as God the Father rule. Or the Holy Spirit, which is kind of floating around out there. We can't really kind of get a grasp on it. Or even Jesus with his big old beard like that. And he's going to be the judge. No, Mary will listen to us. Mary will understand. Other people have suggested perhaps that Mary was the divine feminine that in the pagan days if you wanted to pray to a woman then you could go and you could pray to a goddess like Hera or Aphrodite or somebody but Mary now you could play pray to Mary even though every member of the Trinity has uh, some part of the Bible that describes them as feminine nevertheless they didn't quite notice that so they would pray to Mary Mary was lowly she calls herself lowly she was courageous. She was willing to put up with the sidelong glances and the whispers behind her back of the villagers uh, that she would be living with her whole life because she would have a baby out of wedlock. And birth itself was not safe in those days, right? In Jesus' day, giving birth was dangerous. It was the number one cause of death for women other than old age. And she was visionary. She saw beyond the evidence that was before her that Rome was all powerful and that their brutality would rule forever. She had this vision. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon the lowliness of his handmaid. And from now on, all generations, all generations will call me blessed. He remembers his mercy for all those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the delusions in the lies that they tell themselves and they believe of their hearts and he has cast the mighty down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty again in a remembrance of his mercy mercy is what it is about this is not a vengeance ride and this is not just replacing somebody uh, in power with somebody else this is about mercy according to his promise to Abraham and his descendants forever I wonder whether Mary, Mary is so popular because she represents a part of us, a part of you and me. That God comes to us and asks us to give birth to the Christ child. That every time we conceive of uh, doing something that shows the love of God, that shows who Jesus is in the world. That we are being asked to be brave. Because sometimes people are going to look at us sideways when we do things that Jesus wants us to do. And sometimes it's going to be dangerous. Maybe even as dangerous as giving birth was in the first century. And there will be sweat and toil and labor and it'll hurt. And lots and lots of very, very human goo, like giving birth. And, and there will be joy and wonder and beauty and hope for something beyond what we can see. I wonder whether Mary might reflect a part of what God does through you. Merry Christmas. Let's sing uh, hymn two eight. Wait, let's sing. Um, we'll sing our regular hymn of the day. 
And then we'll sing hymn 289, Angels We Have Heard on High, in our red hymnals. Let's begin with uh, uh, the hymn of the day. Uh, angels, the angel Gabriel from heaven came in your bulletin, and then we'll sing hymn 289. Gabriel from heaven came with wings as drifted snow with fires as flame all hail to thee O lowly maiden Mary most highly favored lady glory for no blessed mother thou shalt be all generations lord and honor thee thy son shall be emmanuel by seers foretold most highly favored lady glory then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head Till me be as it pleaseth God, she said My soul shall laud and magnify God's holy name Most highly favored lady, Gloria of her Emmanuel the Christ was born In Bethlehem all on a Christmas morn And Christian folk throughout the world will ever say Most highly favored lady, Gloria And now let us turn to hymn number 289 in our red hymnals. 289, Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Come to Bethlehem and see 
Him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. You promise mercy to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever. Bring your church into thoughtful, caring, and collaborative relationship with those of other faiths. Strengthen our shared values that we work together in caring for our world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As fields and crops lie dormant, bless them with holy rest. Prepare them to thrive that they provide abundant food in due season. Protect animals who hibernate and provide for all who scavenge for food in the lean season. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. You raise up the lowly and cast down the arrogant. Teach humility to all in positions of authority. Break down systems of oppression, especially systems that perpetuate inequity and exclusion. Bring peace to Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, and Sudan. Do not allow wealth, power, or fame to become idols, but let them be used to bring your justice. Merciful God, receive Lord. our prayer. Look with favor upon all who cry out to you, Accompany with tenderness all who are afraid or ill, especially those we name before you now, whether silently or aloud. Rescue all who experience abuse or who live under threat of violence, especially refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers in search of a safe and stable home. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are pleased to make your home among us. Make our homecomings joyful as we gather with friends, families, and chosen families in celebration. Grant safely, safety to all who travel. Sustain the work of Lutheran immigration and refugee services and other ministries that assist in set setting up new homes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Blessed are you for Mary and all your servants in every generation who lived according to your promise of mercy. Strengthen us by their example until the revelation of your glory is made known. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all of our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. 
Blessed are you for the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's courage and Joseph's faithfulness. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, send your spirit in this bread and wine. Make, may your word take flesh in us. Make us a part of your light and your peace working in this world. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, the body of Christ, have for you. mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sin of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. The blood of Christ shed for you. While we are taking communion, let us sing Away in the Manger, hymn number 277 in the red hymnal, hymn 277.
Please stand. Part of the tradition is that we have a song immediately after communion. Uh, today we will have two songs. I'm sorry, Janine. I'm very sorry. Uh, we're going to sing Silent Night first. And then we're going to sing Soon and Very Soon. Nice combo. Uh, what's... What's the, uh, what's what the number? What page? 281. 281. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you 
and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn will be hymn number 267 in the red hymnal. Hymn number 267. Verses 1 and 4. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations true. The glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His love. Go in peace. Keep awake. Sharing Jesus through worship, worship learning, learning, caring, caring and, and service. service. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.